For the next six weeks, I'm gonna be backpacking by myself through India. Just look at that view. Look where we are. Starting in Delhi, I'll have three weeks exploring the cities of the north, followed by another three weeks in the beaches and backwaters of the south. Look at this. Places like they're just a giant playground of boulders and old ruins, temples. I love it. <laughs> so we just went for a walk into the woods. The idea is he's like some spiritual guy. So people give him donations, they bring him weed. He's just sitting around all day getting high. And he's been doing it for 10 years. Once I get down to the south of India, I've got a rough route planned of like Goa, Hampi, Kerala backwaters, but how long I spend in each place, how I get from one place to another, I've no idea yet. I'm just gonna figure that out once I get there. It's India, so no one's really told us what's going on. Okay, get in there, everybody get in. Please, please. This is something else, it's pretty spectacular. But there's a bunch of coconuts falling out of the tree. Good job we got these roots. <laughs> you're a real man now, you're a real man. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of looped around a bit, seeing if the wind was good, and then we just went right down the coast. It's awesome, we loved it. My journey began with a couple of days in Delhi before making a short flight over to Varanasi. This is just epic. Rowing on the Ganges River. Going around like in a, a pro. Go, going around in a circle though. I'll at least give you a 360 view or so. <laughs> I returned to Delhi for New Year's Eve and then began traveling by train from city to city. So we did the cliche thing of doing the photo with the pinning on top and we absolutely nailed it. Just have a look at this, it's Killed amazing. It. Killed it, fucking killed it. Six hours just chilling out on here, which is pretty sweet actually. First full day in Jaipur. So beautiful, so many colours. First impression is wow. First is beautiful. The breeze is perfect. Yeah. It's quiet. Life is good. Wandering around the streets here kind of reminds me of the town Akraba from Aladdin. Got this travel gentleman doing best camel safari in town. Please check it out, okay? our campsite for night. Not too bad a spot at all, I'd say. In Jodhpur, I got to do a different style of tour around the fort before taking an overnight bus journey from hell to a diaper. Didn't even get one second of sleep. The diaper is beautiful. It's such a gorgeous town. So I'm looking forward to getting down south to Goa, changing up the pace. On my way down to Goa, I'd originally planned to spend a couple of nights in Mumbai, but I decided to skip it. Why? Well, first off, one day isn't enough time to explore that city. Plus, there aren't really any hostels, so I would have been by myself. And finally, a few friends I had made were already down in Goa, so I was keen to meet up with them and save doing Mumbai properly for another trip. First impressions of Goa when you get off the plane is just everything's so green. This place is just so different to what I was experiencing in the north. It's like being back in Thailand or something. Yeah, there's lots of cafes, lots of bars, there's backpackers riding around with scooters, lots of shops selling like fluorescent t-shirts and singlets and stuff. I've already bought three and one of them even fits. That's a good start. So this is Vagator Beach and it's not the best of beaches here, but the reason I'm staying at this one is because there's a great hostel called Jungle Hostel here, so I can get a good crowd going there, and then we can explore the other beaches of Goa. First up, we did a day trip to a rumble beach, which is basically the main hippie beach of North Goa. You looking at the crack pipes? Yeah, what are they, what are they doing? <laughs> what is this? What is that? What do you do with the, what is it, how does it work? <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. Just <laughs> 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 yeah. Can't say far. <laughs> I want to try opium tea. <laughs> oh, they, you what? think you said tea, yeah? <laughs> So we just went for a walk into the woods. Oh, wow. 
mind tell me who the guy is? Yeah, he's just like a baba yeah. who's found in this place for like last 10 years. Okay. And uh, he basically has a blog, blog on the Lonely Planet. He has a blog? Yeah, okay. not, not him, but yeah. there's a blog, a blog about, about him. him. Right, okay. The idea is he's like some spiritual guy in the woods and you go see him for advice, but actually he's just sitting around all day getting high. <laughs> People give him donations, they bring him weed, and he lives off that, lives in the jungle, he has a blog going, and it's like, yeah, there's nothing spiritual about it, he's just a stoner in the woods, so it's, it's pretty funny to see. Like, I don't know his background, but he's been here for a while, and people have been visiting him, right. with like fruits, that, this, and stuff like yeah. that. So yeah. it's just like a... He lives here. Yeah, he lives here. Cool. It's just something that's just stuck. Right, cool. So apparently he just smokes weed and talks shit every day. He's got it made though, he's got a like, right idea. He fools people into thinking having a spiritual experience, so they just pay for him to get high in the woods. And he's been doing it for 10 fucking years, so... Smart guy. So this is a rambled beach at sunset. I think over there there's gonna be tons of hippies playing bongos and just enjoying life, so we're gonna go check it out. Beautiful atmosphere, just all these people from all around the world hanging out together, dancing away to drum music. It was really, really cool to see. It was such a good vibe. So yeah, I like it. I like the hippie beach. And there's three main people who go to North Goa. There's the hippies who have gone on their spiritual journey to get high. There's the party goers who are going to their side trance parties to get high. And there's the Russians. And because we experienced a bit of everything, we went to a side trance, didn't do the drugs, but it was fun watching people gurn the face stuff all night. Chilling on the beach for the day. We've got some Justin Bieber on, life's good. Circle of trust on the beach. Big night out last night. We pretend it was Mark's birthday in a restaurant. That was good. It's the best night ever! What a guy! Yeah! Me and Joel lit a lantern together. I'm about to promise myself to Carl for the rest of my life. Bond. He picked a nice girl. He picked a nice girl. That's awesome, it's amazing watching this fly away. Thank you to Bianca for filming it. This is Bianca right here. Woo! And now we're just chilling on the beach in our circle of circle of Bieber and it's good. And it's good. The circle of Bieber. Oh, it's a donut man. That group of friends I had there is probably the best group I've had on this trip so far. Like we all just really clicked and got on so well. It's a shame when we all went in our separate ways, but that's the way traveling goes. After spending a few days taking it easy in North Goa, I took the three-hour shuttle down to Palalem Beach in the south. Just riding on Palalem Beach, I'm gonna find my hut that I'm staying in at Ray's so you know. I swept my ass off carrying both backpacks and water. Look at this. Look at that, it's perfection. You know, the beaches in the north are, yeah, they're all right, but this is just, gorgeous and the water is like a perfect temperature the sunsets are amazing so you know I was only gonna do two or three nights here but it might end up being quite a few more let me show you inside my hut so it's all to myself little fan which doesn't keep it cool during the day but there you go Got all this space I can unpack a bit all my gear little bathroom in there you don't need hot water here so yeah it's all good it's all good and then I got my own little balcony this area, which is pretty sweet. We've been referring to Palalem Beach as Jason Bourne Beach because it's the beach at the start of Bourne Supremacy when him and his missus are hiding out here and he's going running and all that stuff. So I might go for a run tomorrow just because of that, even though I hate running. Before I went on my geek run, I went for a little explore around with Raya. Raya the dog whisperer. Later on, we went paddleboarding, and it was my first ever time of trying it out. All right, it's paddleboarding time. Let's give this a go. It was all going really well with maintaining my balance until right near the end when I was getting a bit too cocky. Hi, Raya. Said it was 
going well. <laughs> All right, we've got these bikes for the day. I forgot how much I enjoy riding a moped. I did it for a few days in Thailand and a few days in Bali, but that was three years ago. The GoPro is on, we are ready. Look like a tip, but it'll do. Use the mopeds to spend the day exploring the other beaches of South Goa. We've just arrived at Galgabag Beach, otherwise known as Turtle Beach. Oh, it's so much fun riding, but in India, the most important piece of kit on a bike is this button here. And given the excess of beeping we've had for like the last four weeks, people constantly beeping you, I kind of just want to go up to any random Indian and go like, you're right mate, alright, just annoying you, just annoying, just really annoying, really irritating, doing it all the time, just annoying, yeah. Hello guys. Hello. Hello. Alright, the dose are in Tardy House in the Gunda. <laughs> recommended by Lonely Planet? What's this one recommended? Not recommended by anyone except us, but uh, check out these doses. How is it, guys? Mm. Good? Perfect, perfect, nice. Right, and Gunda Beach to see what you got. There's barely anyone here. The sand is absolutely boiling. I wear my flip flops, but if something touches your toes, it's like. Night on Palalum Beach, gonna go get some barbecued fish straight out the ocean. It's gonna be gorgeous. Candlelit dinner, love it. This is uh, only 1300, this one for you. I'm, I'm, I will give you for 300, use this one. Okay. It's so honestly, right? Okay, we're just gonna have a wander around, but we'll, we'll, we'll definitely see you for breakfast. Basically you walk down and you just go around seeing who's got the best fish for the best price. Every bar's got their catch of the day, so we're just trying to find the right one for us. For you, for you! <laughs> yeah, for you, okay? <laughs> so yeah, it's got all the fish laid out. A few good price, haggle a bit, then you eat. Yeah, this, you want this one? 600. This one uh, for you, 450. We've got our meal sorted. For you. <laughs> For you. Let's eat. We've all got glow sticked up for us. We're gonna have a rave whilst we're having our meal. Banging tunes quietly in the background. <laughs> Calamari uh, crab. That looks amazing. Ah. Ah. How is it, Ray? So good. No. Nope. Yeah. No, mate. No I had my fork out like this. And I'm like, no. So if this was a travel show and we're trying out food, this is how a travel show would be. Like, I'm just gonna try out some calamari that we just bought on the beach. <laughs> oh, so good. So, so good. Yeah, that's the All right, all done with Goa after about 10 amazing days here. I had an incredible time, but it's time to go to the next stop. And the next stop is a place called Hampi, and everyone I've met has been absolutely raving about this place. They say it's their favorite place in India. It's just magical. The only problem is, in order to get there, it's an overnight bus journey. Hopefully it'll be worth it, but yeah, just gotta get through this first, so wish us luck. After my nightmare bus journey to a diaper, I was fearing the worst, but it actually turned out all right and we arrived in Hampi early. The only problem was my guest house was on the other side of the river and the boats didn't start for another hour. This is where I got waiting for an hour to get across the river, but first impression of this place looks stunning. It looks so cool. All right, 
get checked in, freshened up, see what Hampy's got to offer. Hampi was the imperial capital of the Vijayanagara Empire in the 14th century. However, the original settlements here date back to the 1st century AD. During its prime, it was one of the richest and largest cities in the world, with about half a million inhabitants. But nowadays, there's less than 3,000 people here. The ruins are spread out over an area of 26 square kilometers, and I'm going to spend the next few days exploring them with Alice and Will, who I met in Goa. New day in Hampi, going to explore around the north side and get some scooters to do it. And these look pretty badass compared to the normal automatic ones. It's probably a piece of shit, but it looks better, which is what matters. So you're going to check out a couple of lakes, go for a swim, cool off, and then there's a monkey table that we get hit up on the way back. So it should be a good day. We were told by a local that it was fish nets to stop the crocs anyway, and after our quick dip, we set off to find the monkey temple. All right, time for a bit of exercise. Go up to the monkey temple. It appears we have two different species of monkey at the monkey temple. What are the species called here, I ask? No idea. Pretty impressive, eh? It's another awesome view. Definitely worth the walk up. Wasn't too bad, actually. The place just keeps going as far as the eye can see. Just endless rice fields, palm trees, hills filled with these red boulders, and just temples sprinkled around. After a great day of exploring around, we head back to town for sunset. Walk it up for sunset. Oh, bloody hard work this. I think it's going to be worth it. Holy shit. That is one of the most spectacular views I've ever seen. That's incredible. It's a mixture of the green and the red. Unreal. Sunsets on this trip. This one definitely wins. But tomorrow, we originally thought about getting a tuk tuk and going to a bunch of different temples, but I'd rather get a bike, ride around here, and go scrambling around these rocks here. Get to that tiny little temple, have a look around. Little adventure, should be way more fun. So that's tomorrow, but today, I'm just gonna enjoy this. Just stopped to get my usual morning Diet Coke. There's this little monkey that's fallen off the roof, but uh, they've taken him to the doctors, he should be all right. He's just resting because he's had an injection, but he's adorable. Now he's start to move his hands and all those things, see? He's gonna be all right though, which is what matters. At least I've got a photo of you on the bike. <laughs> None of these monuments and temples. I don't know what she's talking about. I haven't got anything on my head. <laughs> All right, got our bike sorted for the day. We go on a mission to get to that little temple thing, conquer it for ourselves. Got our ET baskets on our bikes, so we're good to go. Got you. All right.
right, we've parked the bikes in the temple car park and uh, managed to scratch myself in a nice thorny bush on the ride out. But now, we're gonna conquer this little hill and get to that little temple. What have we got here? like a tomb. <laughs> cool. Right, we're right by. We're just going to figure out a way to get up there. Well, let's go for a look. I don't know if this is going to be possible. I'm sure if you're a rock climber watching this, you'll probably think, hey, it's a piece of piss, but I'm not a rock climber. So even if you can get up here, how would you get up there? Hmm, maybe through here. It's a dead end. Let's go have a look at this route. Shit, don't think it's gonna happen. Can't see a way up. It's annoying because it looks so easy from here. Looks like you can easily get up there, but once you get close. How the fuck they got up there in the first place all those years ago, I don't know. Ah, bollocks. Let's try a different one. So cool. Places like it, just a giant playground of boulders and old ruins, temples. Just keep wandering around, exploring around, trying to get up some, planning to get up others. I love it. Oh, wow. That is awesome. <laughs> Don't expect to find this in here. Whoa! It's like a giant dead centipede. Give you a sense of scale. Okay. I just get across there, which is quite simple. <laughs> yes! Made it. Failed to get up that one. Managed to get up here. I will take the consolation prize. Just riding along and spotted this. I haven't got a clue what this is. Okay, this guy knows. You make your wish. Yes, wish, wish. Cool. Ah, okay. So you get a little bag, fill it with stones, and make a wish. He's a wish. He's a wishes as well. Ah, yes. My wish is sun. Oh. My wish is uh... beautiful. Had an absolutely incredible time in Hampi. I mean, the place is so beautiful. I mean, only spent three days there, but you could spend at least three weeks exploring all the different temples and fields and rocking hills and everything. Such a gorgeous place and definitely the most beautiful place in India that I've been to. Like so many other beautiful places in India, you have to kind of use filters or go, yeah, that bit's beautiful, but ignore that shit over there or that big pile of crap where there's pigs and cows and stuff. But Hampi, just the entire thing, as far as I could see, was just stunning. It was time to head to my next stop, the small town of Alapuza, all the way down in Kerala. It was a five-stage journey to get there. First was a tuk-tuk, then an overnight bus to Bangalore, then a taxi out to the airport, then a flight down to Kochi, and finally, a two-hour airport transfer to our hostel. It actually went pretty smoothly here. We're now here in Alapi, and I'm not gonna lie, the place is kind of a shithole. Like, the town's not very nice. It may seem nice with palm trees and stuff, but it's a pretty crappy beach. But what we're here to do is the Kerala backwaters, and that's supposed to be one of the highlights of all of India. Through our hostel, we booked a day canoe trip to take us around the backwaters. I think that's our guide, we're not sure. I think we get a ferry to a canoe, then we go around for the day. But it's like it's India, so no one's really told us what's going on. Okay, get in, everybody get in. Please, please. It's kind of 
like a magical mystery tour because we don't really know where we're going, what's going on, what we're doing. We're just following this guy. Hopefully we'll get to the canoe. Baby mangoes in the tree there. <laughs> I think this is where we're going to get breakfast. Think. Hello. Hello. How are you? Fine. How are you? Very uh, good. What's your name? Priya. Priya. Nice to meet you. Is this your house? Yeah. Very nice. No yeah. idea what this is. No idea. Any ideas what this is? This looks very like that African sort of stuff we were talking about, but it's not. We got this before. Give it a try. Is it just squished rice? But you can it, please. Hopefully, and then see what we've left at the end. Time for the main event. Okay. Own private canoe. Take us around the Kerala backwaters. It'll be a pretty chill day, I think. As long as no one falls in. <laughs> Balance. <laughs> All right, nice and comfy. This is our driver for the day. Cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, have you got any cocktails? <laughs> There's an old mixer in the back. <laughs> I can almost just sit here and have a nap, but that kind of defeats the point of it, really. The Kerala backwaters are a network of canals, rivers, lakes, and inlets that lie parallel to the Malabar coast. Comprising of 900 kilometers worth of waterways, it's a major and unique tourist attraction for the state of Kerala. Well, we've been cruising down the river. Very, very relaxing morning, just down the big wide river, but now we're going down the small canals. And this is something else It's pretty spectacular. But there's a bunch of coconuts falling out of the tree. I don't know if that's on purpose or not. It's a good job we've got these roofs. Here we go. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Well, going down the main river is pretty awesome, but just going down this canal is something else. Just seeing people living their lives. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Make him do the work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you alright? Oh, this is cool. Oh, look at that. Lunchtime. Guys are giving a lot more food than the girls. <laughs> the patriarchal society. Oh, oh. You only got three. Oh. The men got four. <laughs> we're, grow we're growing Winning. boys. <laughs> oh, we just had a delicious meal at the family's house again. Really, really nice food laid out on a big banana leaf. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for today. It was just a very simple, easy, chilled out day, just relaxing on the canoe and just watching the world go by, watching people live out their lives. And just, it was so beautiful. It was just gorgeous. And Kerala's famous for the houseboats going down the river, but houseboats cost way more money than going on a canoe. Plus, the best bit for me was going down the little canals, and you won't get to do that on a houseboat. So, for me, I definitely recommend doing the canoes in the Kerala backwaters because it's just a brilliant, brilliant day out and such a gorgeous way just to chill out for the day and see everything going past you. So yeah, top day out. Walking back through the rice field, it's pretty awesome. Don't trip. <laughs> Basically, we're standing by the rice fields and none of us have any clue how <laughs> rice is made. Alice doesn't know. Laura doesn't know. <laughs> Peter definitely doesn't know. Nope. I ain't got a fucking clue. Maybe she's this French guy. No, she's Fair enough. <laughs> Nobody no knows. Looks, no one knows. Peter's Googled the answer. So the answer is mm. rice is the seed of the grass. Rice is the seed of the grass species. 
something something brackets Asian rice. So they're, yeah, they're basically picking the grass and the rice is the seed. There we go. Thank you, Google. Thank you, Wikipedia. Just about to get the bus to Barkula. Got to wait for half an hour at the station here, but of course, they got this blasting out because, you know, why the fuck not? So, an ultimate journey in India, I'm going to put it with this for half an hour. Why is it so loud? Why? The bus station, just turn it down a little bit. Anyway, it's only two hour bus journey, never get there. We were heading to the final stop of my trip, a little beach town near the southern tip of India called Barkla. It's a place I wasn't planning on going to because I hadn't even heard of it until a couple of weeks ago, but apparently it's a fun backpacker spot where after the chaos of traveling through India for six weeks, I can just relax and have a little holiday at the end of my holiday. Just having a beer at God's Own Country and they've caught just a small fish. This is for 40 kilo for the sore fish. Nice. From Arabian Sea, this is lovely, it's cute, for the bigger, longer, or it's good for grill. This is wow. my brother, big brother. He's coming from uh, Saudi Arabia working. He's a property of the country of the kitchens. Wow. He's today, it's cute, wild fishes. Did you catch what? this? No, 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 no. I bought it from the market. Oh, you bought it from the market, okay. Let's pretend you caught it, it sounds more impressive. <laughs> We're about to get a crowd together in the hostel, we're gonna get a little party going here. But in order to get beer in India, especially in Kerala, like unless you get it from a restaurant, you have to go to these wine shops, and these wine shops are fucking crazy. This is the wine shop, so you gotta queue up and go through that cage in there. It's like some secret hidden down a dark alleyway cage with a massive queue, and then there's like these metal sheets in front of it to hide the cage. So you have to sort of queue around, everyone pushes through, it's all crazy, and then you go through this tiny narrow thing and up to like this window in the cage and you give the guy the money and then he hands you beer. <sighs> it's a lot of work just to get drunk in India. That evening, we recruited a group to spend the next day at an old water park. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> this is uh, Sam's first ever slide at a water park. 22 years old, first water park ever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the joy in his face. <laughs> Sam, how was your first ever water slide? Oh, you're, you're a real man now, man. you're a real man. Hope <laughs> 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 the slide's complete. <laughs> <laughs> we went into the wave pool where men and women were separated. Swimming pool, the boys separate from the girls. I've never seen anyone be so excited about being in water. <laughs> It was the last couple of days of my trip and I wanted to finish with something fun, so I signed up for a bit of paragliding. The pilot, whatever you call him, needs to test whether it's safe or not first because of the wind, so... Seems to be working. All right, we are on for paragliding. An ultimate day of the trip. Thinking what better thing to do than jump off a cliff, so let's go. Run, 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 then once he says so, you just sit back, get comfy. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> kind of looped around a bit, see if the wind was good, and then we just went right down the coast. And on this big get something. Nice. Just soaring above the trees, like the palm trees come right past you. You can nearly like pick a coconut off, and like you've got the birds flying by you. And everyone's waving at you. It's fucking awesome. I loved it.
was so much fun. It was just like you get up there and you feel so free and it's so relaxing. Cool! Awesome! <laughs> that was so much fun. That was amazing. Thank you so much, buddy. <laughs> So, so good. Such a good thing to do at the end of the trip. So yeah, loved it. The next day, I got the train up to Fort Kochi, where I'll be flying home from the following morning. It's the last night of my trip, so we're here in Fort Kochi, watching the sunset, surrounded by Chinese fishing nets and a shitload of crows. But yeah, it's been an awesome trip. I'll talk more about it when I get back to my flat and I'll be all pale and white again. Uh, but for now, I should enjoy the sunset. You've had a good time, Alice? Very good time. Alice loves being on camera, <laughs> so we're just going to do a 10 minute interview with you. <laughs> right, I'm back home now. I've been home a few weeks. My tan's gone, I've had a haircut, I've had a decent wash. And I remember a few days after I got back, I met up with Nick and Amy who run the What The Fode travel podcast. And they've been to India and they loved it, but they've had some friends who went there and hated it. So they wanted to know, where did I stand? Did I love it or did I hate it? And the answer is, I loved India, but I can get why some people don't like it because it is such a crazy and intense place. And it just depends how you react to that. Because even in the space of a day, I could go back and forth between loving it and hating it. And you know, you have some days where you're like, right, it's crazy, it's busy, everyone's coming up trying to sell you stuff and hassle you, and there's so much going on, but hey, it's an adventure, bring it on. And other days, you can walk to a town and you just be like, fuck this, I'm going back to the hostel, it's just too much. So, yeah, it just depends what mood you're in. I mean, every country in the world has its good and bad aspects, but like with everything in India, it's just to the extreme. Because you can literally be looking at the same view, and if you're in the right mood, you can be going, oh, look at how beautiful that temple is, and all the colors are everywhere, and all the smells of all those spices, and oh, all these people aren't necessarily like friendly and approachable. And then if you're in a bad mood, you'd be looking at the exact same view, but going, oh, look at all this shit everywhere, and there's so much pollution, and there's people starving on the street, and everyone keeps harassing you, and the whole place stinks of piss. And it's the exact same place you were before that you loved. It just depends which bit you decide to focus on. And some people try and brush off all the negative stuff and just say, oh, isn't it all just part of the adventure? And the answer is yes, but an adventure is made up of good and bad experiences. That's what makes an adventure. And you're not really doing adventure justice by trying to rose tint everything, as if being somewhere foreign automatically makes everything good and you just spend the whole time skipping around going, oh, isn't this magical? No, it's not what it's like. The real question is, do you let the negative aspects of a country spoil your overall trip? And for me, with India, despite its best efforts sometimes, I still loved it. And would I go back? Definitely. And that's what matters. Next time when I go back, one of the things I was looking at doing is the rickshaw run. I've had a few friends who've done this, where you get a rickshaw and you have to just drive it across the country. And not only does it look like a lot of fun, it looks like a great way to see the other side of India. Get off the beaten track, away from the main tourist sites and see what else the country has to offer. Now, I don't know when this trip will be. I've got plenty of other trips coming up first. So my next trip is in May. I'm going back to Nepal to complete our quest for Everest and do the base camp trek. That's one of the reasons I didn't go to the Himalayas in India on this trip, because I'm going to be there in a couple months time anyway. And after that, I'm going to Africa in the summer, and i got plenty more ideas for trips in the future. So, for India, I loved it, and even though I don't know when, I'll definitely be back.